So I'm reading in Genesis from chapter 12 from 10 to 20. And I'm just going to read it out real quick. It says, but there was a famine in Canaan and it was so bad that Abram went farther south to Egypt to live there for a while. When he was about when he was about to cross the border into Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarai, you're a beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will assume that you are my wife and so they will kill me and let you live. Tell them that you are my sister, then because of you, they will let me live and treat me well. When he crossed the border into Egypt, the Egyptians did see that his wife was beautiful, and some of the court officials saw her and told the king how beautiful she was. So she was taken into his palace. Because of her, the king treated Abram well and gave him flocks, sheep, goats, cattle, donkeys, slaves, and camels. But because the king had taken Sarai, the Lord sent terrible diseases on him and the people in his palace then the king sent for abram and asked him what have you done to me why didn't you tell me that this was your wife why did you say that she was your sister and let me take her as my wife here's your wife take her and get out and the king gave his orders to his men so they took abram and took him out of the country together with his wife and everything he owned and the reason why this stuck out to me is because, one, I've been studying or been learning a lot about fear. And two, I started learning about covenant. And co that was one of the examples that they used to teach about um, covenant. Um, so marriage is a, a covenant. And I've been learning about the meaning of covenant and like that it's basically like a promise and how faithful God is. And even the fact that Abram was fearful and that fear of man caused him to lie about his covenant to Pharaoh. Even though he lied about it, God still defended him. And even though he did something wrong, instead of just told the truth, and he didn't trust God to defend him by telling him the truth, and he was more fearful that Pharaoh was going to kill him, that his plan backfired. And they still took his wife. And um, so, but the fact that... But the fact that um, God defended him, even when he, one, lied about his covenant and, two, lived in fear, that's just showing me how faithful God is. Because how many times do we live in fear, not only just of man, but just in general with situations? Not saying everyone does, but in, me in particular, I live in fear a lot. So the Lord's been really dealing with me personally on fear and not being fearful of man not being fearful of opinions of other people and not being fearful of what other people think or say or doing the wrong thing or saying the wrong thing but being fearing fearing of god reverence of god and you know it kind of um goes and uh, um hand in hand with the last video i made on fear of god this is a good example of fear of man that abram had so um I, that that's just occurred to me like I don't know it's just so cool like how God defended him and I just wanted to share that with you guys not really like to just teach you anything I don't know if there's some view viewers that haven't read this part of the Bible but that part just stuck out to me like I've read this part before but I've never viewed it that way of the fact that Abraham lived in fear of Pharaoh and that caused him to lie so it's two things that he did. And not only that, he um, basically, I don't know if he broke his covenant. I would say he did because he, someone else took his wife as their own. And when Pharaoh took him, when Pharaoh took Sarai as his wife, I, I, I doubt it wasn't just like for two minutes. So you can imagine how many times he's probably like had sex with her and like, you know, was intimate with another man's wife. And so, I mean, it must have taken time for the diseases and stuff to come upon them like I'm sure it wasn't instant you know and I'm sure that they have like their own ceremonies that they had back in Egypt when one got married I mean and it was Pharaoh so it probably took time like I'm sure it wasn't like just like instantly that that happened you know like even though we're reading it fast like the steps fast just we just got to remember that there was time in between like when Abram lied and the time when Pharaoh took um, Sarai as his wife and then like the time after that between being married and then the time of the diseases like I'm sure there was time gaps in between that so you can imagine like I said how many times Pharaoh probably had sex with her and was intimate with her another man's wife and then the Lord finally like stepped in it doesn't say how long it took him to step in but he, he did nonetheless step in he defended Abram and he defended Sarai and he put Pharaoh he put diseases on Pharaoh even though Pharaoh didn't know that 
So I know some people might think like that's messed up, like he didn't know about it. Like he didn't even know the truth. Like he really believed him. But you know, God is still a God of covenant. You know, he was, the fact that that marriage vow between Abraham and Sarai was broken and you know, Pharaoh had taken her as his own, even though he didn't know the truth, like God still honored that covenant between Abram and Sarai. And that's just like humbles me because how many times have I been um, unfaithful to God and how many times has he defended me and protected me and blessed me, you know, restoring things. And just like, sometimes I imagine my, myself like, um, uh, what's it called? Like Hosea, um, Hosea's wife, I forgot her name, but like, she was so unfaithful to him so many times. And, you know, so I don't know, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And it's just humbling to like, know about covenant. I'm still learning about covenant and like reading about like the rainbow and, um, all that. And I just, I'm just trying to dig more into depth about covenant and what it means to be faithful and what it means for God to have a covenant like I didn't know that when they made a covenant back in the days that they used to like cut an animal in half and like walk in between it like just little things like that that I'm learning about covenant like I just want to learn about covenant from all aspects from a marriage point of view from between God and man and between other people in the bible so if you have any interesting input or insight or in biblical teaching on covenant I will love to learn from you um whatever god leads you to so i just wanted to share that with you guys and again it was in genesis 12 10 through 20 all right so i hope you guys are blessed and um happy holidays shalom